All right, so let's jump into this. We have two cameras uh, that have come in. I shouldn't say come in because I picked them up actually. I went over to one of my friend's houses last night. We had a little uh, printing party in her basement. I'm gonna have a video for that probably tomorrow. Um, but while I was there, I was like, please let me fix your cameras because that is a thing that I like to do. And that is the Spotmatic ES. Yeah, weird one, but we'll talk about it. I'm excited. And a Canon AE-1 program. This is a black model as well. And it marked as hers so I don't get it mixed up with the other black AE-1 program because I don't know if I've ever had two black a1 programs in at one time but i'm a lucky lucky boy um the program as far as she told me was occasionally auto firing so i'll show you that in a moment and then this one is having the same issue that so many of these have where Every now and again, most of the time actually, as I've noticed, it, the shutter just gets locked up. Well, the mirror is getting locked up because the shutter, the second returning curtain, doesn't have enough force to continuate the action. So we're gonna pop the bottom off of this. I don't know the last time I worked on an ES or even saw one, but they're kind of funky cameras. You'll notice that there's this little toggle in the front here, and that's actually for a six volt battery, which functions the light metering system. One second, my English muffins are done. I'm gonna go get those out. Sorry about that. I am baking English muffins at the moment. Uh, but yeah, so there's a front compartment for a six volt battery, and there's also an auto feature. For a Swapmatic, that's pretty interesting. And yeah, that's about it. I don't know much more about this camera, I'll be completely honest. I've not looked into it at all, but I'd imagine that a lot of the components are roughly the same. Uh, okay, so that's that's different. That's definitely different is what I would what I would say that is. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> It'll be okay. It'll all be good. I'm going to disconnect the battery, or I'm going to remove the battery just to be safe. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'll lift the board and try to access the mechanical... Oh, jeez. Elbow the K1000 over here. I'll try to remove the board here to access the mechanical components which i assume are going to be sitting under the board and if not then we'll have a right good laugh about how silly i am i think there's just the three screws that are sitting here this is really funky this is really really funky looking um wow yeah i'm, I'm kind of taken aback to be honest this leads me to think i've actually not worked on uh an es model before I feel like if I have, it definitely did not involve opening up the back at all. Or opening up the bottom, I should say. And this looks like it just unplugs from... I love, I love when it does that. That is ingenious. Okay, and now we're at the heart of it. This all looks very familiar. And there we go. Yep, it is just the same issue. We have the um, one of the curtain spools that's sitting here. If it doesn't throw back with enough force, it doesn't drop the whatever catch mechanism for the mirror box charging lever. So that's about it. Let me see if it works on the slower speeds. Now, I guess I can't because literally these are the speeds we have. Okay, so it doesn't work on 60, which is good. That just means that it needs some love. Um, 
yeah, this is a really funky little camera. I kind of like it because it, it reminds me of those like paintings in like the World's Fair from like, my phone is blowing up, sorry. I'm waiting to hear from a customer, so. Anyway, it reminds me of like those paintings from like the World's Fair that's like, this is what the future will look like. It's like flying cars and, you know, the, I don't know, John F. Kennedy shaking hands with an alien or like whatever is going on. Like, th this is the future. This is kind of what this camera reminds me of. It's got this like really, really confident looking board. It's like, this is it. This is the future. And it's a little gunky underneath, I'll be honest. But yeah, I'd imagine it would be because this is fairly old, but this is hilarious. I like how this compared to an Emmy Superboard. These basically do the same thing, but the Emmy Superboard is like infinitely smaller and more complex, I feel like. And this, as far as I know, is just regulating light input and the resistance from the different settings that you have the camera at. And using that to select a shutter speed. Okay, so basically all I did was take a little bit of solvent and apply to that gear right there underneath this little catch. That's gonna be a good temporary solution, but I imagine in time that we can try to replicate that via drying it out. Uh, the solvent will not use to service anymore. So, or maybe it'll just work. Okay, basically what I did was I used a solvent, which was alcohol. You can use lighter fluid as well. I just prefer alcohol, but if you use that, a drop or two in there will basically break up the uh, grease that was put there originally that over time solidifies and causes things to kind of not work as well. Uh, the problem with that though is that the grease, some level of lubrication needs to exist there in order for things to continue working uh, for a prolonged period of time. Alcohol does a good job of clearing that out, but then once it dries, there's no lubrication. So that's why you need a little bit, which is why I use a little bit, like a drop of this gun oil. Literally just a drop. And shoot through it a few times. And that typically tends to help things move along, but we'll see. Um, so for now, I'm gonna just kind of put this back together so I can keep my desk clean, because I also am gonna work on that K1000 here shortly. Just plug the board back in. This is so funny to me. I, I genuinely love this. I feel like I'm... I feel like a in one of those like really old school spy movies. I'm like, gotta plug in the drive. And it's like this just massive floppy disk hard drive thing, which I know I'd be goofing, but I do own a lot of floppy disks, like definitely more than anyone else in my age range, which isn't something I'm like boasting about. It's just something that I'm pointing out is a fact and I don't know how I feel about it yet. But I digress. So bottom is going on, and I love the bottom. I mean, look at that, that is, that is an intensive lip there. Nice and clean on the inside as well. All right, well that was, that was definitely not what I was expecting, but then it was. So I would say all in all, pretty decent. Uh, the English muffins are starting to smell very good, which I'm excited about. It does appear as though there are two different screws in the bottom. The larger ones here, I think, are going to go into the outsides. And then there are smaller threaded ones that'll go in the inside on either side of the tripod mount. So there's that. And I'm gonna keep testing this for the next few days just to ensure that it's going to work. And then I will also run through and test the shutter speeds and make sure that all of those are functional. I did test the automatic feature and it was working on the slower speeds, which I just thought was kind of like funny. Like, 
Like it just works. It's insane. It's so funny. You guys like you wouldn't think this would work. It's you know it's an old Spotmatic, but no, it's it's got a little more up its sleeve. I'm gonna make another video on this actually. So shout out to my friend for letting me work on her stuff and help produce some content. And then we got our AE1 program, which is in pretty remarkable condition, I'll be honest. Let's check the bottom of the camera to make sure things are good. I got about 50 seconds left on the English muffins, and then we have to flip them over. Remember, this is a black bottom A1 program, so it's just the two screws that are right there. God, my neck hurts. Okay, yoink that. So basically what happens in the auto fire is this magnet here just will either be dirty and refuse to stick or it will just not work. And so if it's not working, if it's not sticking, then that little piece there, that little hammer won't sit properly. And when that doesn't, the system fires. Now I've been firing this like on and off for there we go. Let me grab those English muffins in a second. That smelled interesting. I don't know if that's the English muffin smell or something else, but I'll be right back. Right. English muffins are looking all right. So what I was saying is I have tested the shutter for a little bit and I've not really been seeing any of the issues that she was talking about. So I'm just gonna run through a couple different. Stress tests. So the power is okay, which is a good sign. And I've tested a different variation of speeds. I've tested at program. I've tested at the frequency in which I'm um, advancing the shutter and still not really receiving any of the same issues. So I'm gonna put a pin in this for now. And then what I think I'll do instead is just kind of clean the camera and maybe talk a little bit more about it. I know I just made a video recently talking about why I prefer these to the gray or silver AE ones, but I'll talk about it a little bit more, I guess. Twist my arm. Uh, I do think though, this deserves a mention in the conversation of best upgrade from camera to camera, like the OM-1 to the OM-2, I think is one of the larger I'm just gonna actually take those apart, actually, I think. I did talk about this, I think in another video I've not edited yet, but basically this is such an easy thing to just take apart for me that I might as well, so I can get to the nooks and crannies and give it a better clean, just more generally speaking. But the OM-1 to the OM-2 I think is a huge upgrade in terms of functionality of the system. The OM-1 obviously has the very base mechanical functions, whereas the OM-2 has that, the auto. And a lot of people don't really like the auto, which is fine, you're not supposed, I mean, if you don't want to, then you don't have to, I'm not telling you that you have to, but in terms of just like a feature, that's pretty huge. The meter is a huge upgrade as well, but I would also say that the AE-1 program is a huge upgrade from the original AE-1. Because the AE-1, you gotta think is like, that was Canon's like flagship model. That's their adoption of the new body style from the older like F body type with FTB and TLB, TX, FT, uh, F1 even, which was their most professional model. But this was like them scaling down. They're trying to market to a more, you know, more consumer friendly audience. And I think that the 
A1 program is perfect for that because it does have all of the very user-friendly functions like uh, pretty much a full auto system and it's a nice compact form. It is a lightweight due to the plastic composites that a lot of the body types used and it's just really easy to love, I think. And then they eventually brought in the A1, which I think is just a premier model in terms of all of the, like you could shoot with an A1 for like months and still find new ways that you like shooting it. That's, that's how many, I think there's like seven or eight different shooting methods with A1. And that's pretty incredible. Um, I've kind of soured on it a little bit as of late because I just don't really like working on them all that much. I still will, but I prefer not to. <laughs> um, just in terms of the electronic systems are really advanced, but they're also starting to go bad a lot of the times. And there's just some things that you just, you can't repair. English muffins are done again. And like I said, that took less than like less than five minutes to just kind of yoink that off. And now look at how much cleaner it is under there. It's just, it's totally worth it in my opinion. I'll be right back. All right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's done. Feel better about that. Fantastic. Good to go. Put this piece back on here. Put this on right there. that in, screw that in, I have to go through my stuff tonight to find something important, and I can't forget to do that, put that in together, yoink this off, so yeah, um, I think just the A1 program is really great, and it's one of the cameras that I've used the least probably, because I've shot with the an A1 probably just a little bit more because that was like the first Canon A camera that I really got and was using. And I enjoyed it, it's just kind of a lot sometimes. And then I really got into AE1s because they're super easy to work on sometimes. And I got really into working on them and repairing them. So I kept buying them up and I'd buy like worse and worse condition ones and then like repair them and stuff. And I mean, everybody loves an A1 and I don't blame them, but I never really got many programs because they were very expensive for a while. And then when you could find them, they weren't in like the best condition. And I don't know much about like the, the composite that makes up the body. So when they're, the body's like not in good condition, I don't know much of anything to kind of fix them. For whatever reason, the A1 programs got banked around a lot, at least the ones I was looking at. So it's a little bit of a harder sell, I think, but I found a couple good ones. So I was using those for a bit and I enjoy it, but I just kind of was falling out of love with the FD mount itself. And so that was kind of reflected in that. But I think another thing too that I didn't even talk about was just the fact that you can remove the focus screen so easily. Of course, this isn't gonna come out easily at all because why would it? I just bigged it up. Um, but yeah, just popping that out and being able to replace it or being able to clean it is fantastic as opposed to the AE one, which <clears throat> There's, I would rather do anything than have to work on that again. But still, what happens when people dump a bunch of oil in trying to fix their shutter squeals, we get bad focus screens. So it is a fix that is unfortunately too common. The rest of this though is in pretty good shape. There's just like a little bit of dirt and stuff that's collected, which is very, very common but I just want to make sure that I return the camera in better condition than I found it in. Especially because I really haven't done anything with it. Like I said, I'm going to keep testing it um, in the coming days. 
that I have it to make sure that it all works still fine. But honestly, uh, I've not seen anything that would lead me to think that there is a significant problem. I almost forgot to clean out the dust under here. That's a big one. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just keep you in the loop. But that's it, Canon A1 program. English muffins are done, they smell fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it as always. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. We'll catch you on the next one.